Welcome to the true or false section of your homework. In this video, I'm going to cover the same content as I covered last time, but some of the stuff I'll say or some of the statements I'll make are going to be incorrect, whereas some statements will be correct. It's going to be your task to be able to spot me telling the truth or me, me trying to lie to you and trying to fool you. Right? So once the actual true or false buttons come up, you have to decide, is what I said over the last minute or so true? Or is it false? And those buttons come, will come up a total of four times throughout this video. So let's look at the first part. Um, so what is the atom? Well, matter is made up of atoms. So for example, your soccer ball, or your car, or your bicycle, all of these will be have atoms as its building blocks. So the smallest unit of the car or the soccer ball is going to be atom. And examples would be oxygen. That would be a gas, so oxygen gas, and this is made up of two oxygen atoms. Water would be made up of two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom, right? So atoms are kind of the building blocks of matter, and the atom itself is tiny. So if you look at the size of an atom, if we take this dot for example, this dot would have billions of atoms. They are really, really small. So it's going to be billions of atoms. And you would actually need to have a light microscope to be able to see it. So you can't see it with a naked eye. You would need to have an, a light microscope to be able to see those tiny atoms. And so size-wise, they are absolutely tiny. All right, so first, true or false? Is what I said over the last couple of minutes, last minute, true or is it false? So follow the link, true or false. Pause the video and decide and then press your buttons. Right, so if you decided it was false, you are correct because you can't see a light microscope. You need to have a powerful, very powerful electron microscope. So that was false. Right, next statement I'll make is about the structure of an atom. The actual atom is made up of these different types of cells. So we have three different types of cells that make up the actual atom. And that would be your electron, your neutron, which is the one in orange, and your proton, which is the one in blue. And what you should know about them is there are different types of charges. The electron is negatively charged. Neutron is positively charged. Sorry. <laughs> the neutron has no charge. Sorry about that. And the proton is positively charged. What I also want you to know is about the weight itself. A neutron and proton, they both weigh one atomic mass unit. Whereas the electron itself weighs roughly 0 0.001 atomic mass units, actually smaller than that, it's about 1,800 times smaller than both a proton and neutron. So overall the electron is very small, and but the proton and neutron are still small in comparison. So they're all small, but the electron is the smallest and lightest of them all. So what I want you to know is that these, these atoms are made up of different types of cells. We've got the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons, and they're different types of charges. Proton, neutron no charge, electron negative charge, proton positive charge, and their weights. The pro neutron and proton, they both weigh one atomic mass unit, whereas the electron is a lot much smaller. It has less, less than 0 0.01 atomic mass unit. So overall, smaller than the proton and the neutron. Right? So is what I just said true or false? So if it's true, follow this link. If it's false, follow this link. If you said false, you are correct. And the reason why is everything was actually correct. Now, they do have no charge as neutron, electron has a negative charge, proton has a positive charge, the weights are correct, the positions are correct. The thing that's not correct is the word for them. It's not cells, it's subatomic particles. Right, moving on to the next stage. So we've got elements and atoms, right? So what I want you to know in this section is how elements and atoms are linked. So each element has its own atomic number. And the atomic number is more or less the number of protons. So for example, if we have helium, the element helium, we can find the element helium here, and that has the atomic number of two. What that means is it's gonna have two protons because atomic number equals protons. So every helium atom will have two protons. And it's also gonna have, because it's neutral charged, no charge overall, so two positive, 
will be equal to about two negatives, so it's going to have two electrons as well. So every helium atom will have two electrons and two protons. As a carbon, carbon is right here. Carbon is here. It's going to have the atomic number of six, which means it's going to have six protons in its nucleus, because atomic number equals protons. And that's also going to mean it's going to have six electrons surrounding the actual nucleus. I drew one too many. Six. Two are going to be in the first shell. And the other four are going to be in the second shell. So basically what I want to know of this part is that the atomic number defines the actual atom of an element. Right? So the element nitrogen here would have atomic number seven, so it has seven protons. Carbon has atomic number six, so six protons. Helium has atomic number two, so two protons. So is what I said just now, is it true or is it false? Pause the video and decide. You said it was true, and that is definitely correct. Everything I said here is true. We have the atomic number being equal to the number of protons, and the proton number basically defines the actual atom of an element. So each element has its own atomic number, and that defines the atom. So the next part, the last part, is about the model. So here we have a model. This is the electrons. We have this case, we have 10 electrons, and they're orbiting the actual nucleus. We have nucleus inside where our neutrons and protons are, and we have electrons orbiting around it. Now another way of looking at the same thing is a cloud. So instead of having this orbiting, it's basically say the same thing as saying they're orbiting or that they're on this cloud. Here we have a cloud of electrons. Here we have them orbiting. And it's the representation of the same thing, right? So either they're going to show you this kind of model where they're orbiting, or you're going to show you a, show you a cloud of electrons. But you need to know it's the same thing, right? And what I also want you to know is that the size of an atom. So for example, if this were the atom itself, this were a football field. As you can imagine, this is to be a football field. Let's say we have, now this is the kickoff point. If we have a soccer ball, the soccer ball would be tiny in comparison to a whole soccer field. But let's say this here is your soccer ball, and this would be a neutron or a proton. That's how big they are, roughly. Smaller than that, roughly, but roughly the size of a soccer ball. Whereas the actual electron would be roughly the size of a ping pong ball or a Tennis, not tennis ball, but golf ball. Right? So overall, what I want you to know is that most of the atom, right? So if the soccer field is the atom, most of the atom is dead space. It's emptiness. Right? There's nothing inside here except for a vacuum. And every now and then, you're going to have an electron, a proton, a neutron. These are going to be in the center of it. And electrons are going to be orbiting around it. But overall, most of an atom is going to be nothing. It's going to be dead space. Right? So this is what I just said in terms of the model. Here, is it all correct, or is it some of it false, or is all of it false? Is it true or false? You decide. You said false, and that is correct. The reason why it's false is because I said that the orbiting model is identical to the cloud model, which is not. The orbiting model is kind of a misconception. It's not really the way it is, whereas the orbiting model is more realistic. So they're not the same thing, even though we are often given both of them. This one is more simpler to understand, but it has its misconceptions because they don't actually orbit. They kind of zoom around. So the cloud is more realistic. And what I mentioned here was correct. So we have the atom being most of it being dead space and some neutrons and protons being roughly the size of a ball in comparison to a soccer field being the atom and electrons being roughly even smaller than the size of a tennis a uh, golf ball but yeah most of the atoms dead space okay. so that was your homework thank you for watching and participating and what i want you to do now is i want you to leave a comment below and i want you to write your own true false question which your classmates will then respond to so make sure to pop a true false question about the atom so the stuff that we've covered in class in your comment section below but thank you for watching